meeting to order at 6 uh, p.m. on June 6, 2018. Um, we're starting at 6 tonight. We're supposed to have a tribe board uh, meeting so far. It's just a single meeting right now. So we'll do the uh, consent agenda. We might as well get that out of the way. And then we can go into uh, David. Nice to have you here this evening. And we'll just uh, go into that. Uh, so the consent agenda, we have the minutes from April 11th and April 12th, 2018, and we have warrants PR 1844, PR 1846, <coughs> PR 1847, PR 1848, AP 1847, AP 1847S, and AP 1848B. We have special town election uh, on June 21st. We'll sign the election warrant this evening. Chapter 61A, conversion of land to other use, land off of Westgate <coughs> Drive. Um, they would like us to waive the right of first refusal <coughs> and the 120 waiting day approval uh, period. Uh, FY 2018 budget transfers. Which we don't have any. We right don't now, have so any. Okay. One day liquor license for the Most Holy Redeemer Church for August 5th. Um, that is their Polish festival picnic that they will be having. Chapter 90, road resurfacing. And we have an attached list. DPW end of probationary status for Brian Lemerad. Lemerandi. Lemerandi. Thank you. And an MOU hauling and disposal of sludge for the county, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District in the town of Pasadena. I'll make, sure, make a motion to approve, but I have a question on one of the items. Could we have a second for discussion? Second for discussion. Okay. Um, the Chapter 61A conversion of land to other use, land off of Westgate Drive, so that's the property that's the um, covered by um, North Maple Street. Yeah, right. The, um, Circuit research park. There. Thank you. Yeah. The research park. That's what I was looking for. Um, the, there wasn't anything, I don't believe, unless I missed it, attached about that land. Uh, that? Let's see if it's in here. Here it is. It should have been the plug, then I don't know where I Yeah, it's not in here. Okay. So I just want to see. So this is Allard's Farm. Yeah. Um, and the location is shown in Exhibit A. So it's 19, 19 acres, mm -hmm. and that is for solar energy? Yep. Is that the? Okay. Yes, solar energy. So I just wanted to get an orientation on it, so. Where's that existing solar array? Is that near there, or is that? Mm -hmm. That should be to the south, is that? Southwest of that. Right. So can you, can you just orient us? I'm assuming that's the on the bottom is North Maple Street, and then we're on the other side. Yeah, so we're going to call that one. Yeah. 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 This is the home. This is the Home Depot store, and we're talking about the, the land that's uh, to the east of there. And it should be developed into a solar farm. So, due east of Home Depot on the other side of North Maple. Staples. I'm sorry, Staples. So, okay, so Westgate Drive. That's not the research oh. part. Oh, Westgate that's Drive. That's where the entry. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. Then that goes back to yes. It yeah. is near yeah. what you were talking about. Yeah. So this is the one we've been talking about all along behind the staples. Right. 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 Sorry. I mean, so not all the yeah. we've talked about before here. So the roll, roll back taxes on that part. Too, about eighty-three thousand dollars. 
I also admitted um, a historical commission appointment. Um, Diana West would like to be appointed to that position also. That's great. Okay, that was okay. my only question. I just wanted to, so it is, no, it is the existing one that we've been speaking about. Yeah. Any further comments from anybody? Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, so we will go into charge board. We have members of the finance committee here. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Uh, tonight we were going to um, we have presentations by David Eisenthal and um, Linda Sanderson, um, our treasurer, and uh, we're going to turn it over for you. We have three things on the agenda that we might as well just uh, all hear from you about okay. from the treasurer's office, if that's okay. Okay, yes. Um, Dave Eisenhower is here tonight with me because we have new select board members and uh, we have documents to sign and we thought it would be good and because we have the finance committee members here as well, uh, David is our financial advisor from Unibank and has worked with us on getting um, all of our bonds and bands for past several years. And um, the newest band and what I'm having you sign tonight um, is uh, is one that went out to bid last Thursday and came uh, came in at the lowest bid at was for the full amount at 1.85% for the full $2,760,000 that we are uh, borrowing this year. We are doing this for uh, nine months. Uh, to come due next March, at which point we're going to consider uh, going directly into a bond. And there, that's different than what we had said originally. We were probably going to do bands for longer, but there are some market considerations for that. And maybe would, David would like to. What, what was the rate we got in the last one? Last uh, 1.24, and the, I think, if that's it, was three. Okay, and the year before that was 0.7. Four, maybe so. We it was had criminal, whatever it was. It was. It was. It was. It was <laughs> yeah, it was. It was amazing. Yeah. Too bad it wasn't reversed because we were doing smaller was borrowing then. But this is hmm. this is where we are. So. And the rate um, this year is. One point eight five percent. So that was a, a great bid from Greenfield Cooperative Bank mm -hmm. um, on the full amount, and we did have other bids that were two percent and higher. So uh, we're very. Um, appreciative of, have, of that bid and that we've got something to go forward with. But um, I, again, I think a, a little bit of the shift in the plan. Um, if you want, I can send this around now for signing well we talk. Sure. That would be helpful. Fine. Okay, there are five tabs in it. Uh, unlike other times where you sign some, all five of you uh, sign in all five places. Thank you, David. Can you, yeah, okay. So yes, I, um, why we're going for nine months this year? That was that was interesting change because we've all been going for the twelve month. Uh, Madam ban. Chair, through you, um, I, I think this has been a continual process of evolution. Uh, I've been talking with this board, the town administrator, with the treasurer for a few years now. Uh, we prepared. Uh, a capital financing plan in the fall of 2016, uh, which was um, the source of trying to uh, limit the impact on a certain group of projects uh, to the $95 per year uh, impact. Although I think that since the uh, menu of projects approved by the town has expanded, I don't know that the $95 is still quite uh, as much the target, but um, we've been looking at uh, planning for timing of projects and market conditions and debt as it rolls off. And uh, as I say, this is evolving. Um, our initial thought had been if the senior center had been proceeding more quickly than it appears to be, that there would be a larger um, borrowing coming more quickly than calendar year 2019. We had initially thought that we'd be looking at a larger temporary financing, say late summer, early fall 
uh, this coming fiscal year, this calendar year. But um, as we look at uh, progress on the Senior Center and the other capital projects being uh, somewhat slower than what we initially thought, uh, thought was, well, let's just have this note that the town is doing now in June, have that roll out to March of 2019, and see where things are at that point, especially the, the senior center may be about to, if things go as folks think, uh, senior center may be about to go to, at that point, to really uh, proceed um, uh, in earnest at that point. And, um, a larger borrowing and whether it's a another temporary borrowing or a combination of temporary and permanent financing that's something that we can evaluate uh, a little bit closer to that period of time. If, may I ask you, um, so this is a ban, but if we were going out to uh, more permanent financing right now, what would we be looking at for rates on the building project? Probably in the threes somewhere. Um, I know we have been using 5% uh, for a 25 year uh, permanent financing, but that assumes issuance now four years from now, fiscal year 2022. Um, and I think what we want to do is uh, look at all options, present options that um, would still maintain as stable a tax rate impact uh, as possible, uh, but at the same time, um, and, all, well, and also making sure that uh, the, um, we <coughs> gear the financings to the cash flow. We don't want to get too far ahead and borrow well ahead of uh, the need for spending. Sure. Um, there's no advantage for the town in doing that at this time. Can I ask, though, if, um, just as a general, general thought, um, if, if in fact we're expecting two, if not, you know, potentially even three rate hikes this year. And I know there's not a direct correlation between Fed rate hikes and, and municipal borrowing, but it certainly informs the market. Rate, I mean, rates aren't likely to dip um, at this right. point. So the longer that we delay that borrowing, we're likely locking we'll be in a position to lock ourselves into a slightly higher rate. Right, although what we're observing is that, um, and you noted the, the rate hikes, the rate hikes are all in short term interest rates, which actually uh, correlate more with the type of borrowing that the town is doing now, the, the, ban. the ban issue. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're seeing longer term rates not move as much at this point, although I think there's some expectation that they will, that they will. Yeah. as well. Um, so, uh, but I think it is with that thought that uh, we want to look at the option of permanent financing for at least a portion of the issue, if it makes sense in the context of what um, the voters in the town believe that they vote for right. in terms of the capital projects. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so with this ban, we aren't going to pay any of this back basically in the next year. We'll uh, start making payments on it. We're just going to pay the interest. The interest will be payable at maturity on March 15th, mm -hmm. 2019. We, we've been more aggressive with that, though. The, the idea of the uh, bans at one point, a ban, by the way, is BAN stands for bond anticipation notes. So these are short term notes that, that the idea is at some point you roll it into permanent for, uh, financing with a bond. We've been using the bans as a way to, uh, to because we aren't doing the large borrowing yet. And uh, when the note comes due, we have been paying down about half a million dollars and about 30 or so of that has been interest and the rest is principal. So we have been paying a lot of principal down the first couple of years. That's in keeping with the plan for uh, having the debt exclusion um, portion of the, um, of the tax rate increase only by the $95. So we had we got going on making those payments and they're really going mostly to principal. And had we done more borrowing earlier, we'd be making that same payment for more that would be going to interest. Okay. So out of the two million two point seven million, as as Linda's saying, um, 
only about a million and a half is a renewal of the note that's coming due. The town issued almost $2 million last year. The town is making a principal payment of almost half a million dollars with this um, with the maturity of the new of the notes on June 15th. The town is issuing $1.2 million in new money uh, for various projects. I think the senior center is $350,000 of that. There's the um, land purchase. Land purchase and stormwater is part of this as well. Dyke survey. Yeah. yeah. Um, the school HVAC uh, is, is part of that. So, um, but we're holding, I think the town is holding back uh, on larger borrowings for the larger <coughs> projects because those projects really have not gotten going in earnest. Yeah, so once we pay the contracts and the payments are due, then we'll reassess our borrowing. That's take more money that's right time yeah. right do you and not to get too far off the bands but do you have an idea of what our average rate is with some of our longer term financing that we have out there now what we're, what we're paying versus I'm just wondering if there's existing debt that could be refinanced with shorter term debt in the meantime until and then refinanced again at a you know, when we take out a larger amount down the road to pay for the long-term debt for the senior center? Yeah, um, municipal debt's a little bit different from consumer debt in the sense that um, usually when debt is issued, and the town issued long-term debt most recently in the fall of 2014, fiscal year 15. And um, at that time, the um, town placed a provision in the bonds that after eight years, which would be 2022, so that's four years from now, um, the town would have the ability to redeem bonds of that issue, pay off bonds of that issue. Okay. Um, we have looked for opportunities, and in fact, I've been working for the town for um, a number of years and have been involved with refin refinancing of issues. Um, we will keep an eye on that 2014 issue, which is really the only issue at this point. Right. Right? That would be a possibility. Uh, and just one other thing that you should know is that under the Tax Reform Act that just passed in December, um, it used to be before that passed that uh, municipalities could uh, refinance with what was with a, a mechanism called an advance for funding, where you could sell uh, tax exempt bonds well in advance of when that call or redemption date is. Mm -hmm. um, the Tax Reform Act signed in 20, December of 2017 prohibited that on a tax exempt basis. So the earliest we could, that the town could look at a refinancing of the 2014 bonds is now sometime either at the end of, I, I don't recall exactly when the call date is, but somewhere 20, late 2021 or early 2022. But we will keep an eye on that. But that was just my concern because the rates are trending upwards and I think it will be for a long time so I think I couldn't tell you exactly but I think the 2014 issue okay. um, was uh, pretty fit had a pretty favorable rate so that was above threes or something it was about threes as well yeah. I don't recall exactly that's, that's what I would say got, yeah. 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 anything else Linda? Uh, was there a motion and vote to oh, Motion. I just want to make, are you done <clears throat> with what you wanted to present on that? On, on the borrowing, yes. I wondered if the Finance Committee had any, don't have any questions. questions. is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Great rate, might as well get it. Yeah. 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 So I'll make a motion to approve the, um, the borrowing as presented. A second. Yeah. Any other questions? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And, uh, yeah, it, it, are you going to be able to, you, you can sign yeah. them. Okay, there's five places to sign and then I'll get it back from you after that. Sure. Okay. Do you want to talk about um, payroll and vendor warrants? I, we can talk about warrants. Um, it's, that's just going to be it for a few minutes. Do you, you want to hang out? No, I'll, I'll Yeah, okay. Yeah, because I want to get some, get you your copy to you. I will. So. Well, this is going to be a scintillating. If I drag on, you want to leave it. Well, so I'm okay. sure it's going to be more scintillating. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I'm going to try to ask you a couple questions regarding this. This will make it interesting. <laughs> well, this is on the warrants, so and I know that the new members are like, uh, they're coming at you all the time, and look at the stack right there. I mean, it, 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 that that is the way it is. We do every single week a vendor warrant, every week a payroll warrant. We go ahead and we have to pay the payroll warrant whether you've signed it or not, which is why um, which is why it piles up sometimes because the, the paperwork just hasn't gotten pulled together and and then we get it. So I think you've got uh, three uh, payroll warrants to sign there this week. Um, we have had a bit of an issue with the vendor warrants in that, and it's it's just it's just trying to keep up with the times that the turnaround times from getting receiving the invoices and getting payments out. Our statements arrive by mail, our payments go out by mail, and everyone wants to get paid in two weeks, and then some of them have finance charges. So getting the, the warrants turned around uh, without feeling like, you know, just nag, nag, nagging has been a, a little bit of an issue. We certainly want you to be able to look at everything that you want to look at. But if there's a way that we can come up with together to have a little bit uh, a quicker turnaround from when we can get the cuts, when we get the cuts check, checks cut, to when we can get them out, because at this point, absent you're coming up with another system, I need a full uh, a majority of select board members to have signed the warrant before I, we can send the checks out. Now, on a week where, uh, so the the invoices are given to the accountant by Tuesday at noon. Um, she generally gets, um, Mary Beth gets it turned around and to us by Friday morning, uh, and that's when we can get the checks cut, and that's when I'm sending out to you, and this was a suggestion of one of, one of you, or both of you, new members, that could we at least see the register. So I thought, that's a great idea, so I get the register and the cover out for you so that you see that this is a $90,000 warrant, and this is the list of everyone's being paid and how much. So that's a lot, that you're getting that much information on Friday, but nonetheless, I'm still I still have to wait, and I, I generally do, because otherwise I'm at risk for having sent out checks um, that haven't been authorized. Now, we've talked in the past about a more abbreviated system, and I think that we had, for, uh, we had it last year for a while that uh, David approves and uh, Molly, who was the chair of the select board at that point, and could run over at noon on a Friday if we needed her to, that those two signatures would would take care of things until you could sign them the next uh, at the next meeting. We would still always want you to sign them at the next meeting, but the issue is, can I get them the checks uh, out before then? Um, so that that was working for weeks when you didn't have a select board uh, meeting or when the warrant was running a little bit late. And I actually would um, that's happening more often um, lately, and we have gotten in a bind a few times. And as I say, I'm, I'm nagging you, or I'm saying Jennifer. You call them this time, or or, or I, I say maybe you could just just send me an okay by return email. But it feels um, it, it feels like we should be able to do something a little smoother. And I wondered how you felt about it, having looked at these for <coughs> as long as you have. So, is, is there a way that we could move to? I guess maybe David signing off on them, or Joyce as the chair, just one signature, and then at, at the end of the month we could all sign for the entire month's worth, you know, the, the following month, so we're maybe 30 days behind, and that way you have it for the record, and that way you're not waiting on us with that. I mean, I don't know what's required as far as, yeah, but you're, we still review it. But you're looking at a two-week turnover, roughly, so you don't get... Uh, I'm saying David can sign it each, each yeah. week as needed, and then at the end of the month... No, but I mean, oh. if, if we're meeting on, on our regular times, right. it should be no problem. I'm on vacation standard time, that's why I wasn't in here Friday. <laughs> so, um, but usually I try to come in and, and sign the ones I can, um, for the most part. Well, well, I think what I think what David's getting to is, um, Th you is know, the cost benefit analysis yeah. in, in terms of risk. I is mean, the okay <coughs> legal the way she's sending us an okay? To yes. Some of the stuff I can't open, so I just breeze through when uh, I do come here. Yeah. But it, as long as the okay is legal, I don't mind responding to your emails. But. With, an, with an okay? Well, and, and that's... Um, that was a question I had. Right. Um, I'm satisfied with it. I guess, you know, whether it's legal or not, I mean, I think that, you know, I don't think that you're going to say, wait a minute, next Wednesday I'm not going to sign this, and you sent an email the week before, I think, you know, it was, 
but certainly not a more majority is, of you is going to do that. Yeah, and somebody time. would have to have hacked um, into your email and, and responded right. on your behalf. Right. So I mean, I think it's pretty low low risk. God knows why anyone would want to look at our municipal yeah. emails. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I had a, co a couple of thoughts. Well, is that I you mean, don't it's all public documents. Yeah, yeah. So they, they are. Um, and I can't send the whole warrant. I mean, they end up being yeah. with all the, it's like 400 pages, and it just, it won't transmit. You have trouble in opening I, a register. I, now you would never yes, open up the whole warrant. I have trouble opening some yeah. papers. Mm -hmm. um, well, so I think in Hadley, the, the town accountant's independent, right? It's, it's a third, third party that comes in. They have no skin in the game per se. So when you think about the internal controls, you've got the outside town accountant, you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Treasurer, and David. I mean those so to me, I mean I think about it when we're looking at it. I'm not necessarily looking at it with the lens of, you know, searching for an invoice that has doesn't have proper authorization right. or a fraudulent transaction. It's yeah. it's really more making sure we understand the rhythm of what's flowing through into whom so that it might provoke a question or two that right. we might not otherwise. Yeah, we're not auditing it. Yeah, we're just yeah I mean, the audit, when the audit comes around, there's enough questions about everything in there. So. Right. Yeah, I prefer to know what are the procedures for checking <coughs> these, which I know you've explained to me before. And there is, you know, the accountant looks at them, you look right. at them. Uh, yeah, the one I sent to you, if you see, has two sets of check marks. The yeah. one's gone down one side, and I've gone down the other. And I see, like, the, I think probably why we look at them is looking for fraud and those kind of things. I know I personally just don't have the capability to work through <laughs> that much paperwork in a, in a week or in a day or any time. Well, so my, for me, I'd rather see what are your procedures and everything like that. I have no qualms about holding up the checks going out for the town. I, mean, I just feel like we want to know that there is a system in place, that system is being followed, and that everything is going out. But I don't think I my pers one person on the select board needs to sign off on it. It's gonna, it would take three-way collusion. Right. I mean, that's, yeah. that, that could happen. You know, I don't know if you guys yeah. talk about it much, but I mean, you know, it, it would take three parties to collude yeah. to your point. Yeah. It, so, it, I was going to say, I think we should still have the responsibility of reviewing it at some point in signing yep. off, and I just don't know that we need to do it on a weekly or even bi-weekly basis. So. Or that it has to be a pen and ink signature right. to have yeah. that approval. Well, no. We, we yeah. want you to have the, 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 the oversight, and we right. welcome that. Uh, but, you know, when we've got 100, uh, 100 checks that are going out late and we're accruing uh, finance charges or late fees uh, right. on those, we don't need that. Yeah. No, yeah, it we doesn't seem like that's what the taxpayers want us to do. No. And I think by getting the register out to you, which I'm really able to do very quickly, because uh, it's just the first you know, seven pages or so of it, something with if anything jumps out at you, say, like, this is okay, but please hold up this bill or send me the underlying invoice on, you know, why we're spending forty thousand dollars on on, on this, what's that? You know, yeah. um, and I, I can usually send that. I'll send you that invoice, and that will explain it, and what the account is, or what the article is that we're spending it under. And if you really had an issue with it, we just, we would just wouldn't send that check out. Right. Yeah. The, the electronic you, registers are great because yeah, I can you really all would have that option <laughs> anytime. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what process do you want to do? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm just going to throw something out. Is like sending out an email to us with that register. I don't. Is there? A certain time when you could send that out on Friday, and when it needs to be approved by fri on Friday. Um, uh, Is that how it typically works? I receive the register usually by Friday morning. Um, if there's a problem, it's later. So I can't say a particular time that it would be out to you, which is why I've gotten in the habit of mailing them out on Monday. Unless okay, that's when they typically yeah. go out is Monday. So do you still want to do pre-review? Because I think what David's suggesting is that the select board, we would cha actually change our policy so that we do a post-review as long as all three of those. Right, right. And maybe it, as long as David or somebody signs off on it, that yep, it's good to go. Okay. Unless you feel that the chair needs to sign Afterwards, we can just be a month behind. Basically. I'm not. I'm not uh, frank with you. I won't be around most of the summer on a Friday. So yeah. Okay. So yeah. So could we have, um, especially, and, and David takes some time off too. So could we have in default of David? Uh, I think last year we had the chair. Or and now you're saying. You well, know, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I can come in on a Sunday when I come oh. back. <laughs> Is that too late? Yeah, I like that. Or you, you can. I mean, I can delegate, and if I, I can. 
Yeah, or one, I think one, one member, members. I think, of, of the fine. five. You're the yeah. clerk. I mean, between the two of us, we can get it done by Monday right. morning. Okay. I mean, Thank I you. That really can always come in on a Sunday, which I normally do yeah. anyway, if there's something that's late on a Friday. And any bill that I'd be getting out, I do make payments before then. I'll, I'll drop off five on my way home, because I don't want to trigger a Staples late charge. <laughs> so I, I will do that. So. Yeah, and I usually, I almost always give you a month's notice of when it's going to be taken mm -hmm. time, so you know, you know we're doing such a lie, which is right, so I think they're right. Okay. They're saying one person can, basically, you know, the chair of the select board would approve these warrants. Yeah, or their delegate designate when yeah. they're not there, and that can be the designate could be anyone else. So David or a member of the board can basically release the checks, and then we'll still do our review and sign for them at the right. whatever. We can, we can do a reality check in September, see how things go. That's mm -hmm. fine. Okay. And maybe we could redraft the the policy too, because I think there is an actual written. Oh, well, you actually, you have the one in here, so maybe that needs to be done. So we'll actually have David sign off on them, and if he's not here, then I would sign off on them if you're not here. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll so we'll just modify this memo for 2006. Okay. Yeah, that's, I, that's why I thought it was easy. That's because we've done it once before. All right, we'll okay. have this free to sign Eating, right. Thank you very much. <laughs> so do we need to vote on that? Did you get a GPS device and see who's <laughs> closest to the Do we need to vote on that? Yeah, do you want to sure. vote? I can. Do you want to vote when we have this ready for your signature? Or do you want to vote now? Let's just do it now and yeah. get it done with it's in place for the summer. That way you can start this next week or whenever your next one. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, let's, yeah. Let, I, I'll make a motion that we, <laughs> I'm going to try to get this wording together, it's confusing, but that we authorize the town administrator or the select board chair or, or, her, their, or her designate to sign all vendor and payroll warrants on behalf of the select board until further review. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 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 Well, and the accounting. Um, accounting? Can I go? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, because I'll, let, me, uh, let me deal with the paperwork here, and then we can go over the... Uh, Thank you. We can go over the special town meeting schedule. Did finance have anything they want to share, share tonight? I do. I, I have one other one topic that I did want to bring up. Okay. All right. Um, I know we're dealing with a lot of important issues right now, but I'm sure you all agree that no more, uh, no issue is more important than our um, safety of our children and the security of our schools. We're all sadly familiar with the rash of school shootings and um, that's devastated the communities. The one thing these communities had in common is none of them thought it was going to happen to them. Um, right now in Hadley, um, we just had a troubling message the other day um, and that sparked a lockdown in our schools. I want to commend the school um, and how they handled it, the police department and the fire department. They did an awesome, awesome job. Um, but I think that we need to go beyond the response of that. I think we need to look at um, being proactive. I've done some look. There are grants out there. Um, I would like to um, see if we can set up and start a di dialogue, a public dialogue. Um, I know that they've been probably working on these things, but I would like to see if we could, I know that um, it costs money, so that's why I'm bringing it up as finance, um, so that way it's something that we can really take a good look at and, um, you know, what we need to do, whether it be metal detectors, whether we need to do more training, but I'd like to be proactive in this situation. And I think it's a big topic. And it was pretty scary when we get messages um, from the superintendent that, sh that there's a lockdown. Thank goodness, you know, they do a wonderful job there, but if we could stop, you know, even having the threat of something coming into the schools, that would be great. We have a uh, public safety committee that is comprised of the fire chief, the fire police chief, um, the DPW director, the building inspector, yes? 
understand that one. That, no, that's the Maya. Still the Maya is different. different. But, but that's still, I mean, it's, a, it's the group of people that would actually uh, come together and talk about these things. And I think it's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, so I that think that, um, yeah, and down the road, I think that we could, if we could do some, uh, like a public forum or something, I mean, I mean, I'd like to see, I, I know that they're probably doing it, but I'd like to hear more that they're doing it. I'd like to, as a parent, I'm sure all the parents want to know what's happening, you know, because it's a scary situation. Yeah. We just want to know what's it's uh, happening. There was, there was quite a bit of lapse time between uh, the parents really knowing what was going on. I, I know I got quite a few calls, and I called David to see what was going on eventually. But it, there, there was quite a bit of time where the parents weren't reassured that there was no immediate emergency or danger, you know. So I don't know if you guys had a little review well, a of the situation. A lot of that had to do with the fact that we didn't know. Yeah, well, I, so I kind of figured that. It takes time. But, yeah. Um, sorry, didn't mean to say yeah, uh, I think that before we go the grant route and start doing grant writing, that the a public forum and the chief determining what direction we want to take would probably be better before we start using the, the time and resources to write those grants. Only sure. because, yes, there's metal detectors and things like that, but those aren't always the best bet to stop the current thing that's out there just mm -hmm. from the law enforcement perspective so not to say that we don't want to do that but there may be better ways to spend the money that might be more effective so i just think the the departments and the, the chiefs and, and the public's uh, input just to direct us you know so we can basically target something specific and, and get it moving rather than just kind of throw a bunch of stuff out there and, sure. and I, I think too that the, the school department should be absolutely yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah that's where I, what I was going to yes. say is that I completely agree with that but this isn't something that one department no. can make a decision on and it, it needs to be school committee, you know, school department, um, the superintendent, obviously, police, fire, and most importantly, you know, the citizens of Hadley and folks who have, you know, kids in the schools. Um, none of these steps are, uh, can be taken lightly because it, it, it is very important, but, if, you know, we need to go in the right direction. And it needs to be something that the, the folks who live in Hadley want to do. Um, so they're not going to force things post-mortem or whatever you want to call it, you know, after an event. Nobody died to no post-mortem. Well, <laughs> debrief. You know, debrief. debrief. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Debrief. Yeah. Um, but when you guys had your debriefing afterwards, did you talk about any anything along the lines? And, and it is a tri-board yeah. meeting. And it right. Well, that's why I thought it would be appropriate. Well, they have yeah. yeah. their own meeting tonight. Yeah. So, so, okay. Okay. Meeting tonight, so, so that's that's kind of part of it. And I spoke with Amy earlier about it. We've actually worked. We've actually were involved to the school committee's uh, executive session um, a few months back Mike Romano the, the SRO and I uh, and I know the fire chief has been involved as well they you know that we actually were, we were working with the uh, uh, trooper Carmichael who does this stuff specifically for schools uh, to do threat assessments in each school um, so that's some of the things that they're doing on their end as far as the school committee goes moving in these directions metal detectors did come up as part of it but as far as the after action report that was focused mainly on that investigation mm -hmm. but it will it will expand to include what's the next step um, as far as something large of, of, of that nature you know we have cameras and you know several other things high cost items um, that we think would be steps in the right direction but like I said it's multifaceted there needs to be a lot of input uh, from folks who have you know knowledge on which direction we should be going. Mm -hmm. it's good to know. You know, depending what the grant would be funding, some of the large ticket items may be something that would, would be worthless, sure. you know. Well, one thing you also have to remember is that... Every situation is different no matter yeah. what. It's just like with the fire yeah. service. Well, and the, and the other thing is, is a, a lot of the feedback that we got, at least at the police department, either through the school or directly, was the thing that made everybody feel the most safe was the presence of the police and the fire department there that day. Um, they didn't, most people, like you said, John, didn't have enough information to know exactly what was going on, but simply the fact that we had people there 
is what makes people feel safe. Um, that's kind of the direction. It, it's uh, it's um, that's the direction that I'm heading with my operational budgets as we move forward. We have one SRO for four schools. Right. Um, that's not enough. It's that simple. So when I got the message, I did. I, it was. A, it did make me feel safe. Right. When so I have a child in both schools. Um, it did make me feel safe to know that they were there. But before I knew what the message said, because the message it was unclear that there was a message, but I didn't know what it said. It made me very anxious. Well, what about tomorrow? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, well, when they're not there. One thing I will say that maybe we can look into for all the different departments is, and just coming from other towns and cities that I lived in recently, uh, the communication methods that were available are a lot faster and you know there's text messaging systems and other emergency alert systems now granted we have the email and uh, dr mckenzie did you know i guess the best she could but getting emails out and which which was very much appreciated but um there's systems out there that i know there's grants available for uh that say the police department has the ability to blast out there's an accident over here mm -hmm. there's a you know something going on over here there's a fire over here dpw can say that you know you can subscribe to di different alerts mm -hmm. or overall the town can send them out or di different departments and kind of improve communication across the board uh you know the mother's club does a good job with sponsoring the school closings and the phone calls and stuff like that but as far as you know for every department i think it, the communication can be improved with modern technology a little bit rather than having to have her type out a long email and explain everything. Just get get that information moving quicker. Yeah. We so. never fully implemented the technology we have, correct? The code red system is avail. It, it is available. It is working. It is in Mike's the fire the fire chief's domain. Right. Um, he's essentially. I'm not sure exactly where he's at, but he is. He has different blocks of categories that he can send emergency messages out. I don't know whether or not parents of students is one of those categories. Um, the only issue we get the, uh, we get the school cancellations yeah. via text message, so yeah. I don't know how that's yeah. different that's than PTS the or yeah. mother's club that's sponsored. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. The only but thing that I'll system with, is there so. with code red. I noticed, and maybe it's just the way I have it set up, but you get an alert in the app, and you actually have to go into the app to look at it right. versus just the text message showing up, which right. to me is a heck of a lot easier than having to oh, log into something. It's, it's kind of an outdated, you know, it's almost like it's so it's yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. Um, so, we, so we will progress to you working with Superintendent McKenzie. And yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's something that. that you feel is necessary, the fire chief. Yeah. Um, and then outreach to the public um, for whatever they want to hold a public forum on that. that I think it's probably, I think it's where, probably where the best it should idea. head probably after this mm -hmm. incident and. You know, I agree with Amy that if, if, at these times that Hadley does not sit in a bubble, um, you know, and no other town sits in a bubble, so anything can happen anywhere. And timing-wise, so. I mean, having that forum, you know, if it was all possible, it would make sense to have it before the next school year starts, mm -hmm. you know, so people are much more informed walking in in terms of what yeah. to expect. And mm -hmm. if that dialogue has resulted in um, any suggestion about expenditures that that could result um, you know or come through grant funding and I'm sure that we would all fully be supportive of that yeah. yeah like I said what I can tell you is the school committee is is fully on board with investigating all avenues they were thinking more capital um, obviously grants are you know they are drying up in different areas they have been for some time but there may be things out there that we can, you know specifically for specific items metal detectors just as a you know just throwing that out there if that's where people want to head um, as you were saying earlier there are other pitfalls that come after you know that you have they have to take into consideration if you're going to do something like metal detectors but that's those those are some of them are are going to entail a cost um, you know if if you're sending 150 kids through a metal detector every morning and it beeps you don't want exactly somebody needs to now check this person and what happens if it is something and um, you can't just the metal detector isn't going to take the gun away from, from who makes that decision to put those metal detectors there because there could be 
a lot of parents that don't want their kids going through metal detectors Absolutely. into school because that's an intimidation factor. Well, that's why there things. needs to be more discussion. Yeah, so I need more discussion. We're only at the tip yeah. of it yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. So. That's what I was going to say. We should have the more yeah. That's why it's so important to have yeah. a discussion. Yeah. And very similar to the ambulance. And I thought when we were looking at what ambulance was, which one were we looking at, um, it did cost, wasn't, didn't seem to be as big of a factor. The factor was what was the best service for the person for our our community what was how are we going to best serve our community and to me this the school safety is top right there so cost isn't a factor i people want to see their children safe that's the most important thing and to underscore I, what mike said too that i'm not sure everybody caught too i heard you say four schools it i mean clearly we're focused on hopkins academy and have the elementary school that serves most of the kids here, but we also have the Chinese Immersion School and Hartsbrook in town as well. Yeah. And, so. yeah, and Hartsbrook is really starting to, they're starting to come around to everything that we're doing in the other three schools as well, so it's, it's okay. ramping up Mike's workload. Um, everyone really seems uh, really on board with a lot of this emergency planning and making sure that we, we know what we're doing together as a group. Um, last week was, was a good I hate to say it this way, but it was a good test to see how well we work interagency um, with the school department, um, you know, the superintendent, the fire department, and all that. Um, and I know Annie won't say this, but I'll say it. Um, her, obviously, her top concern was the safety of the school and the kids in it, but communication was a very close second. Whether or not the technology that she has is the best, I don't know, but I can tell you that she was you know, hard charging to push information out there every, after she checked with us to make sure it was okay to go. Um, she, that was a, a number one concern to get that out there to everybody. There's just, as you know, there's just certain things we can share at certain times. But I, I just want everybody to know that she was. Uh, she does an amazing job. She, yeah, yeah, she was amazing. So she, she wrote me a letter, so I have to, uh, this might be an opportune time for me to read this. It said, Dear Joyce, I realize I write to you and the select board regularly about the contributions of our public safety officers make to our schools. I would like to once again acknowledge the skill and professionalism our public safety officers demonstrate and express my gratitude for their commitment to keeping our students and community safe. On Tuesday, May 29th, we identified a potential security threat at Hopkins Academy. Police and fire responded immediately. Chief Mason, Sergeant Cook, Sergeant Hartwright, Detective Green, and Officers Hoodick, Douglas, and Kupian arrived at Hopkins, assessed the scene, initiated investigation, and implemented procedures to ensure safe, student safety and maintain a calm environment. Chief Spank and Abel requested Deputy Chief Evan Bryant and Lieutenants Nick McKenna and Brian Moskevich maintain a presence at the elementary school as police investigated the incident. The presence of firefighters at Hadriel Elementary School ensured the safety of the students and staff and provided a sense of security for everyone at the elementary. I received numerous emails from parents thanking the school department and public safety for responding promptly exercising an overabundance of caution and for doing everything they could to keep the children safe and feeling secure. Both Chiefs and Sergeant Cook worked with me throughout the day to draft incident updates and communicate with families. In the days following the incident, Officer Romano has been pre present at Hopkins Academy to answer questions from students and staff. He has attended a faculty meeting to discuss and debrief the incident. His presence in our schools instills confidence and a sense of safety among our students and faculty. We appreciate all he does. Hadley is fortunate to have such high quality police officers and firefighters. A community that invests in public safety is a community that cares deeply about, <clears throat> about the welfare of its citizens. Um, thank you for investing in our supporting our dedicated professional public safety personnel. As you know, I believe it is important to recognize excellent work. I hope you consider sharing this with the select board. I would like to personally thank every Hadley Public Safety Officer on behalf of Hadley Public Schools. So thank you very much. <laughs> of course, these letters have gone into each and every officer's box. And we did uh, give my copies of these for that purpose. So. 
thank you to everyone for their dedication and their support for the schools. And I know that it will, will go further again um, as we establish you know, a means of the school um, taking further look at what's going on and setting up a policy. I know our public safety will also be involved in that. So, thank just, you. Just a side footnote to this is we are having our capital, capital, campaign, capital committee meetings coming up. So if there's anything you foresee, we might want to just put a line item in there with just some numbers, just to plan for it, but no big deal. Just mm -hmm. a footnote. And can we just ask, um, Chief Spanknib, but you weren't here when we were talking a little bit earlier, but uh, we were talking about the communication system, the the uh, texting system that you have. Oh, the code red? Code red. Yeah, code red, and how, if it's fully implemented or if it's in need of upgrade or what the status is on that. Uh, the company upgrades that annually, so there's really nothing we need to do other than just update them if our population increases substantially. Okay. So we didn't know if there were any other um, like groups or anything that people should be participating in, or if there's any further education on what people need to do from your standpoint. The only thing we haven't done in a while is we haven't done any outreach on it to get other folks to check it out on the website, and that's something we could assign to Evan. Uh, Taryn Harriman used to do that, mm -hmm. so we could certainly do that. Um, how do you but find it? Not to interrupt you, yeah. but how do you, how do you find it? It's on the Hadley Fire website? It, it's on the town of Hadley. It's okay. uh, right on the main page. It says Code Red. That's where you can sign up with all your different phone numbers, text message numbers, or text message, whatever whatever that is. Yeah. Emails, everything. I think you can do up to four different um, uh, responses that they can send messages out to. And that's strictly just used for emergencies, um, not, nothing else. Do we have a lot of people signed up for that, or is that? I we mean, actually, they, the, the company goes through and signs up everybody um, that has a landline, oh. and then it's up to those people. Um, we offer it up all the time, but it's up to the people if they want to take advantage of it, because sure. you're giving your personal information. Obviously, it doesn't go anywhere. They don't, they don't sell it or anything mm -hmm. like that, but mm -hmm. some people still don't like giving out their, their information, but right. anybody that has a landline, that's populated in there. And what if you don't have a landline? Then it would be up to you to sign up and put your cell phone or whatever. If you want to just do an email, you can do that as well. Yep. Who, who pushes out the alerts? Because uh, I'm signed up for it and nothing for that incident was pushed out that I saw on Cobra. So That's correct. We did not push anything out on that because that was a school. Uh, the school has their own uh, reverse information. So um, it wasn't something that we felt that should be going out to the, the entire town. Right. on that because then all of a sudden we have 5,000 people driving over to the school to take a look to see what's going on right. so that that wasn't even entertained at the time but I'm I'm one um, I believe David is a backup to me Mike Mason has access and then we're also using it for I don't know if you're still using it but the police were using it for recall of uh, police officers for details uh, we actually have all the schools we're trying to get a few additional numbers from new staff so that we'll be able to populate, you can populate individual groups. So we have a school group. We're trying to get it so that you won't have to do your snow list. We've been working on that. That's supposed to be completed, but uh, something that maybe Evan can finish up now because Taryn was working on that. So instead of having the call down at 6 a.m., David could just punch out a quick uh, reverse call on that system saying no work today or, or whatever. So. Do you have a form people can fill out? You go right on the website. If you if they don't know how to do it, we can, they can give us the information. They can come into the station and we can fill it out for them. If you have a form, we can make it part of our outreach that we're doing at the shredding event with the number, please, and the. We could give them the information as to where to go. Um, I mean, I, I prefer to have a laptop there and just enter it manually for them rather than having their information on, on paper. That way, it's one less thing that we have to. Make sure Shred. it gets shredded. <laughs> 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 but yeah, we can we can set that up if you want. So if anybody's interested in signing up for Code Red, it's at www.hadleyma.org, and it's right on the bottom of the page. I believe when you click on any department, I think it stays there. So if you go to the fire department, you're having an issue with it, you can call the fire department, the business line, and we'll walk you through it. And there's an app for your phone, so download mm -hmm. the app and sign up. Perfect. Should we do a special town meeting countdown? 
we'll get back to that. Uh, May 30th, we're past the date. The capital plan update starts. June 20th, the select board sets date of uh, special fall town meeting. We'll do that at our next meeting. Select board opens the warrant. Deadline for articles will be August 1st. Inter introductory warrant prepared and presented to select board and finance. August 1st, select board does the warrant. All articles and capital requests are due. August 6th, capital plan committee begins meeting. Uh, community dates include August 8th, August 20th, and August 27th. We actually have an update on that. Scheduled to go okay. Uh, August 15th will be select board review warrants. September 19th, Finance Committee, CPA Committee, Capital Planning Committee recommendations are complete. Warrants and motions are prepared and set to town council for review. <coughs> Madam Chair. Yes. Can we vote on setting the date for the meeting tonight if possible? Um, and it is set discussion? well. Town meeting is October 18th. Right. Well, you guys, you guys will vote on that. Yeah. Does that not work for you? No, that's that not what I wanted to make sure that it's set. I know the planning board was it was last night. I was trying to plan for oh, as well. Okay. So the sooner better we'll put it rather than later. September 26th will be legal review of articles and motions is complete. So let's board signs the warrant. Last day to post the warrant and publish notice of the special town meeting is October 4th. October 5th, motions are distributed to select board, moderator, finance committee, and others. October 11th, we'll have a special town meeting public forum. And October 18th is a special town meeting. And the only amendment to that is um, Chris wanted the capital uh, projects to be uh, submitted on June 22nd. Uh, and the capital committee will meet in June and July. And it'd be a 10 year capital plan, not a five year capital plan. Do we want to just update this with those dates? We don't have to do it right now, but just. Yeah, so as yeah. soon, yeah. soon, yeah. soon as I get your, your okay, then I will update everything and get it up to the department heads so that they have, and post it so everybody knows what they're like. Make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve subject to the. The uh, measure dates. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Alrighty. Anything else from finance tonight? Otherwise, we'll move into. I think we we need to do some transfers. Yeah. Don't have any for you right tonight. now. We have something from the fire department. I was just gonna. I, I was gonna submit it to you tonight. I just got it done. We had talked about it yesterday. Okay. So. Yeah, it's up to you if you want. We can talk about it at the next meeting. Right. We're just it's part of the ambulance and, and we're meeting tomorrow too if it's something right. interesting. So it's up to you. Uh does it just need the finance committee to sign up on it? Or is it well, I think it is it a line to line transfer or is it a reserve fund transfer? It's a line to line. Line to line salaries so to so expenses. The select board and the uh and the finance committee. Okay. So would you like to take a look at it, Chair? Sure. together because we are under the assumption that at some point we'll be signing a contract with somebody for ambulance service and assuming that that ambulance will be going into the station uh, 
we had discussed this at one of our ambulance committee meetings about having to uh, make some space in the station because we haven't gone through the vote on the north station at this time and even if that was approved it would still be at least another year before that north station would be built so we are we are very stressed on on uh, space as it is um, so what we're requesting, and there was one additional item that we had talked about as well, I had talked with David and Joyce and Molly about, was um, the first item you see, it's uh, $2,500 to the University of Massachusetts for one of their old staff cars that they are selling. It would replace our Ford Expedition, our car two, that had to be retired back to the excess property program because it started on fire twice. We were unable to put it in park and was becoming too much of a hazard uh, that was free to the town and we put very little maintenance into it and it, it served us for four plus years after it served uh, the Grandy Fire Department for a number of years and then uh, the federal federal program as well. The University of Massachusetts has, uh, it's actually from what I was told, Barb O'Connor's old chief's car and it's in very good shape that was looked at by uh, Brian Washdevitz, our, our mechanic firefighter that we have on board and he said it would definitely fill this gap we have for you know the next two years three years until we put into capital um, for a new staff car for our deputy chief who is currently driving around in his his own pickup um, we're waiting we are waiting for the um, administrative truck that we combined as a utility vehicle and um, the ability for our fire prevention and folks who drive around in town, that's due to come in in the next few weeks, uh, but it still doesn't fill that gap. We just don't have enough cars for people to get around in unless they want to drive around in a fire truck. So that was one request. Uh, the other part is a, uh, was 17500 and this is all coming out of the uh, full-time salaries. So we had budgeted for six months for the four full-time firefighters. We've brought on two and the other two are slated to get in before July 1st. So factoring in what we have to pay out for those full-time firefighters, we're, we're looking at a pretty substantial amount of money going back to the town, and we thought this would be a good way to try and fund some of these short-term projects. Um, we currently have about $80,000 in that fire line. Um, and so if we, if we covered all these projects, it's, it's uh, I think, 35000 um, so we, we wouldn't really be putting a huge dent in that. You're going to be seeing some money returned from the fire administrative assistant that was that left. It's about $5,800 left in that line. And our call force line, uh, the temporary wages, um, that, that has this, this substantial money left in those lines too, just from um, the decrease in response from call force members and Stanley's no longer with us, so that was a big part of that um, and we'll have a, a little bit of training and uh, fire prevention wages left as well so I think we have plenty of money to cover the rest of our budget so we're looking to do uh, right now we have a big training prop inside of our station multiple training pop props we store speedy drive for car accidents we store sand or salt I should say um, so what we're looking to do is build that training prop on the west side of the station, the back side of the building between the two bay doors and put a 10 by approximately 10 by 14 structure there that would act as that training structure that we have in the station so we could remove that and then also allow us to store the lawnmower, snowblower, speedy dry, salt, and everything outside of the station in that structure. So it would, it would multitask as a training structure and also some storage for us. Uh, the $10,500 purchase, uh, number three, would be for a 30 by 30 uh, 12 gauge metal structure to house our, our boat, brush two, and utility truck temporarily uh, until a decision is made uh, if we're going to go forward with the North Station. If it happens, then uh, that structure could be either repurposed in town or, um, or sold. So that's what that structure is. Uh, part is. And the last part for 10,000 is to replace the wood shed on the police side of the on the police side of the building. Uh, the roof is completely falling off. Um, the base of it is falling apart. It's not big enough for having spoken with the police chief on it. Uh, we're looking to get a little bit bigger of a structure and 
reconfigure it on the property so we can actually, um, you'll, you'll be seeing one of our capital projects that was in last year, I think we had talked about it with repaving uh, uh, the public safety complex and adding a pad for our dumpsters and the two trailers that we have. So that's what, that's what we're requesting uh, for those transfers. So Mike, just a question for you. And I know we've talked a little bit, but just so the people might be thinking about it too. Um, so the ask is so all told, it was just over forty thousand dollars, and so seventeen thousand five is for build out of a storage training addition, mm -hmm. and part of that is to take training equipment effectively that's being stored in the station, and it provides an expanded space and pushes that out. Then the gauge metal structure is for the boat brush to and a utility truck to free up space for those. And then <coughs> the other one is basically kind of a replacement of a building that's currently just kind of rotting anyway. But are, are you asking for money to build storage for anything that we might get rid of? Or is all of this stuff you're planning on keeping? This is all stuff that we're planning on keeping. We just we don't have room in the North Station right now. So engine three, I mean, luck, well, I shouldn't say luckily, it's being borrowed right now. So we have, we're literally trying to get stuff cleaned out in anticipation of that truck coming back. Because uh, South Hadley's down at Pumper, so they requested our, our engine three, uh, which we are helping them out with. That's not gonna last that long. Uh, so that means our plan was to move engine three up north, because that's the normal protocol, but we don't have that north space unless we do that that bump out, but we thought it would be a little bit more wise to wait and see what the vote is, and if we're going to be building that out, leave engine two up there, not invest small dollars on that, and um, and move forward that way. If not, then we're going to have to do the bump out and see if we can get engine three into that that building, and then we'll reassess engine two. We don't want to get rid of engine two right now because it's a spare for us, and um, it is still rolling out the door all the time, and. Um, I don't think it's wise at this point, but we're still looking at the cost for maintaining it. If it comes back with a huge maintenance cost this year, then it will probably be retired. But we're hoping to keep it for at least a year or two after the addition of Engine 4. So. And do we have to do both the storage training addition and the gauge metal structure in order to make room for the ambulance? Uh, well, we can park equipment outside and put a tarp over it, so we could do that. But we're looking at, you know, we're looking at a boat. Um, that's been inside the structure for its entire life, along with brush too. Do we so use the boat? Yes, we use okay. the boat quite often. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have four on the river. What river? The boat's actually used for do both departments. Uh, yeah. Police actually will utilize it to get out to the little island with all the folks partying and the the bonfires and the fireworks, and then also <laughs> during the summer we usually have multiple incidents where we have um, you know people that are injured from ski ski dues we've also assisted mutual aid down to South Hadley we have assisted up north for the gentleman who drove his car into the river for a search and rescue so that boat is quite quite useful it's also it was also used as part of the dike inspection which we could certainly start utilizing it again because it's a big difference when you're looking at it from the river versus on top of it which so we were using that as well and will that structure have sides on it? It will, will have sides, yes. It will have sides, it will actually have gable ends and a back end. Um, it will have one opening on the front side. Mm -hmm. So it's mostly just, it's not gonna be heated, so you know, if winter time comes and we don't have a plan in place, uh, we'll be emptying the tanks on it. It's, it's just gonna, you know, there's hose, there's equipment on here. Um, it's just not something that should be sitting outside. We have the utility truck right now with the old uh, brush pump in it that's sitting outside the station which we don't like and you know Molly and I had talked about it and we're trying to get rid of one for one so if something's coming in let's get rid of one or two things and we've really been working hard on doing that. And this is all money that's remaining at the end of this fiscal year which is in Correct. a couple that, weeks. That shack's just sitting on blocks there's no floor in it. The existing one on the south side. The police? The shed? Yeah. Um, I think they originally put it on blocks, but everything is rotting out. No, that's what I'm saying. There's yeah. no concrete floor in it. Why no. don't you put, why no, don't you put so. that big building on that south side and just 
to make it big enough for both, then leave it there permanently. You're always going to need the room on the police or the fire side. I mean, that's an option, but those structures, I mean, um, those structures, we're looking at, you know, 10,000 for a 12 by yeah. 14, so it would be. Uh, we were talking about repurposing this metal structure on the police side after, so maybe they could park mm -hmm. their cruisers, but we also have those two, uh, we have the police, their their trailer that they have for... Yeah, but you know, see what I'm saying? Why well, do it twice when you put the <coughs> one, one bigger building right up there on that south side, which you don't utilize that corner anyway. Um, you kept it on the south side of that parking lot where all the, the lawn is, you got plenty of room there. Mm -hmm. least structure. Maybe it's a bigger yeah. structure rather than yeah. two. Well, I understand. I'm just not sure that you want to put up because it's going to be like 20 something, 30 something feet tall. It's 30 by 30 and I'm not sure you want to put something that tall and ugly. Plus, you're talking about an open like building that. versus <laughs> a enclosed, the ability to lock it up. Like they, you know, they keep bikes in it and so it would have to have a portion that, I mean, we can certainly look into it. I'm not opposed to it. Trust me, I'd rather not lose the parking on the fire department side, but. Um, we can certainly look into that. It's just it would be either two separate types of structures or you know, we'd have to... You want something that's movable so that in case you have to bump out the other side there, you're going to have room to do it. So I, I know, yeah. but the way that whole parking lot is set up right now, Joyce, especially in the wintertime uh, plowing, mm -hmm. if everything was in, in inside under mm -hmm. one cover on that south corner where that wooden shack is right now, it would be a lot easier plowing that. Place, you know, and then you got to make the pass over to the elementary school, and it, it would just be one uniform, yeah. one uniform small building. We just have to make the pad bigger, probably. Right. Well, it depends on if you need it secure too, because you have stuff in there that well, you secure. Well, I mean, we could just design it yeah. differently to have a secure area. Yeah, just I, I don't see a big problem with securing it. You're putting four sides on it and a couple garage doors on it anyway, probably, right? Well, I mean, we can we can look at a different type of building, but it would be pouring a concrete thing rather yeah. than yeah. having a wood structure come in and putting it well, up on. Pier. That's what I'm saying. For the amount of money you've got in both of these, you probably could build one one nice permanent one over there rather mm -hmm. than. We do have in capital to expand their parking, so I mean, it could certainly be incorporated into that as well. But that's. And, and the other question. Yeah. Chief, what are you using now? Using Instead now for of what? That blue. Expedition. Nick and um, Nick and Brian, if they're responding to a caller, the police have lent us one of their detail cars, but they take it back when they need it. Uh, and then Evan's been driving in his his personal vehicle or you the utility have, truck. You don't we have share. one coming up. I just I said that we have. No, the, police oh, don't have please. one coming up to release their fire. To release. Are they rotating one out? Yeah. Rotating one out. No, I actually pulled. Our cruiser from Capital this year. We don't. We're, we're actually in pretty good shape with the new ones. Our maintenance has been really good. Uh, we have a new maintenance officer who's taking care of stuff. So I pulled it for this this upcoming year. So you're gonna have. You won't have that expense. We actually talked about that, and uh, he want he is looking to get that back into service for details, especially with what's coming up down the road for you know the summer. So it's it's been very nice that he's loaned it to us right now. It's just. You know, we're responding to medical calls and fire, some fire-related calls at the police cruiser. So it's, it's nice, but it's something that it was intended to be short-term. No, I'm just in the past we've, we've always yep. tried to rotate a police cruiser out into the fire yep. if if it was mm. sure. in good shape and, and reasonable condition. I'd be more than happy to put the cruiser back on Capitol and rotate that car over the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> we just had an opportunity when we found that car. Yeah. Would you like to allocate this money for so that the finance committee can take it tomorrow and uh, review it? Kind of get a motion here going. Yeah, I'll make a motion to reallocate transfer this money uh, for the vehicle and the two storage sheds. Three storage sheds. Two storage sheds and fill that. And then you could look at it. To see with that money, yep. if you can do the one, absolutely. Between you two, you can figure it out. And I'll second it, just reminding everybody that's forty thousand that will be coming into to free cash, though. So extra, just just 
Is there any, just one more question, is there any additional money that you would be transferring to free cash, or is this everything you've got, basically? No, there's going to be a bunch more money transferring to free cash, I believe. So, uh, like I said, I factored in, you know, we're looking at maybe two two weeks of salaries for the firefighters. I figured probably around ten or 15000 to finish up this fiscal year, and I have 92000 left minus the forty. Okay. So that's just for that full time. That doesn't include the call force temporary wages, the training wages, and the fire administrative, the five thousand eight hundred dollars in that. So I think you might be looking at a good chunk coming back. Okay. Motion on the table for a second. All those in favor? That's my four day fire post day. Yeah. Those are finance for tomorrow night. Thank you. So we went out to bid uh, for accounting services at the regional uh, bid contacted eight companies, only one sent back a proposal. That was their kinship out of Sagamore Beach, uh, down by Cape Cod. Uh, and uh, the price was $70,000 for the first year, and then uh, additional monies thereafter. Independent of our bid process, and by the way, we, we don't have to bid for accounting services as an example under Chapter 30B, but we can it anyways. Um, independent of the uh, account of the uh, bid, um, our current uh, um, uh, accounting services through Bay State Municipal Accounting submitted a proposal for uh, less money, uh, $55,000 as opposed to $70,000. They did not have information about the, uh, the, the bid, so this is not influenced by one number or another. And members of the financial management team met to evaluate the, the accounting proposals, conducted interviews with the two accounting firms, um, and we decided that uh, we would make a recommendation to the select board that we continue for one year with Bay State Municipal Accounting subject to the condition that A, a representative attends all department head meetings from now on, B, that department heads make use of the weekly conference calls with the treasurer and town administrator and Bay State Municipal Accounting. We have a uh, standing appointment at 9.30 on Friday mornings where we call in and we uh, have a laundry list of things that we go through. Marlo, you're invited to this one coming up on this Friday for the year issue. Uh, see that Bay State Municipal Accounting performs quarterly budget check-ins with department heads. D, that the Bay State Municipal Accounting conducts a training session, sort of like a boot camp, about accounting procedures, how do you do your vendor uh, uh, turnovers, how do you submit payroll, how do you, how do you check up on information, and then Finally, that the town that develops and follows a reporting calendar for reconciliations, revenue reports, and expenditure reports. So uh, the reason why we decided not to go with the kinship's operation, <coughs> even though it's very impressive, is A, it's more money, but it also seems like this is not the year for a startup operation. We have the new free cash certification uh, process, which we would have to start from scratch with a new company. We also, in connection with the uh, with the, uh, the bonding that we're anticipating to do, that we're probably going to be asked to do a recertification of our bond rating through standards and four. And it didn't seem prudent to choose this year as a new start. So one year with Bay State Municipal Accounting, subject to these conditions, uh, and then we'll be back in. Uh, evaluate how well they were able to up their game, be much more responsive to the departments, uh, 
as well as getting the reports in on time that we've uh, had some troubles with. And uh, if, they, if they've approved their process, then that's one thing. If they haven't been able to approve their process, then we take another look at getting sure it's operation. So can I just ask, I mean, the conditions are always a good idea, but they're only worthwhile if there's any teeth in them. So mm -hmm. short of saying, OK, here are the conditions, but then you know, they, they know that they've got the contract for a year anyway. I mean, are we withholding payment? Or what, what, what can we do if they violate the conditions? Well, we can certainly write that into the contract. Yeah. Be in favor of so writing sure something into the contract. That says we can terminate the contract. Is what I, I would think yeah. for, yeah. But it's just trying to right. trying to get somebody in midstream. I mean, they're kind of holding the the cards on that one. Right. It would be really hard. So I think it would have to be monetary. That's my thing. Do we have that list of conditions? It doesn't look like that was in our. It wasn't in, in the, these proposals. It wasn't in the, uh, the information we loaded up into the uh, board docs, except that it is in my administrator's report under the finance okay. management team. All those conditions are spelled out there. And do we have a plan B if, if Justin won't agree to the conditions? Okay, sure. Linda, uh, what's your take? I mean, you deal with. Yeah, I, am, I, I raised the concern about our, our the bonding coming up, and that uh, we're also because <coughs> of the bond that we would be doing early in the year because you, you see this year we're doing our notes in June um, and next year we'll be doing it in March which is three months earlier which means everything that we um, when we want to have our audit done we have one have our book well, for cash is for town meeting but mostly the audit um, which we had kind of aggressive schedule with them this year but it still just came out did it come out in March I'm not remembering that yeah, March or early April came out. Yeah, like early um, April. I, th I think that's it. We would now we've already talked with the auditor about we need it done sooner this year because we're not just doing a note. We may be going for the full bond, and uh, they have stepped that up and are coming out to their initial meeting in September. And this past year, I think it was in December. So we're moving everything forward and have the same players working together. The auditor has worked with this accountant who's worked with us to have the people be the same. Um, and be able to let's do it again, just like we finished up. Let's see if we can get it done a bit quicker. That that seemed um, that, that seemed reasonable. Um, it, 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 the being mindful that the inconvenience has been the relationship with department heads, and that's something that we that's why it's being built in this condition. I don't think it's something, I don't know if you've spoken with any, I don't think, it's certainly not something that's objected to, I just think sometimes it's not fully understood. One of the teeth that I plan to have is nagging, I mean a lot, I mean we talked with someone you know, at honestly at Department of Revenue who said, well, you kind of get that with this one, you kind of going to get that same thing here. You need to learn how to be a squeaky wheel. And, Maybe we need to learn how to be the squeaky wheel. That maybe we have to turn this Friday morning one into more than our. You know, and, and he's aware, but I don't say anything about right. him that I don't say to him. It's like we really need this. This is really important. Um, I don't always bring everything up at every meeting, but I think we can have to huh? clearly. And and, I, and that's the idea of bringing departments heads in. But you're we, getting you're getting what you need though, as far as and with these conditions, you'll get what you need. For what I need is the stepped up in the last two or three months. So, but you know, I, I'm on the front line and, and I think that is a, you know, that's, that's just the start. Okay. We've, we've had this trouble since we've been with this company. We had an account here, which we had some issues with, but maybe it's time to look back on getting an accountant back here full time for the amount that you're getting these bids in on that would be here. 40 hours a week. We, we, we did discuss that as being one of the things that would come back on the table if, you know, if this doesn't work out. And I don't think that we would wait a year to consider. I think we would, you know, go into the six we, months and start looking yeah, at we, it. We've options. had trouble right from the beginning with this. Right. And uh, we had another situ another possibility to discuss to get something full-time that isn't necessarily an accountant, but is in regular, we have a part-time accountant that can be used in a full-time assistant accountant. That would somehow, that would be able to, see a lot of why we need someone present 
is to get out these reports. A the department head needs a report, and you get out the report. That's not account report necessarily. In fact, Joan and I can do that. Is that we, you know, we 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 can't do it on top of what we're else we're doing all the time. You need to have the accountants department doing the accountant work. Um, so we, there might be just financially a better way to work it out for the town so that the services are met. And what Amy was saying earlier, what are the services that the town <coughs> can get that done in the most efficient way? And maybe not necessarily go for the full-time uh, accountant if we have other options. And one of the things we talked about in the department head meeting today is that there were actually some um, good suggestions that Justin brought to the table but, and one of them was implemented and then almost immediately kind of fell off, and that was the monthly publication of reports. So what happened was department heads were like, oh, this is great, you know, we have access to it, and then suddenly they couldn't get access to it any longer, and it was blamed on a password issue or something. Yeah. And then there were other great suggestions that he brought to the table, but they were never implemented. So I think the department heads would be a lot happier if if it just was carried out the way it was supposed to be carried out, and the only performance in this regard will tell me. So in six months, we'll reevaluate. Uh, it, it, well, this is really, you know, this, I'm agreeable to that. And I think the entire, uh, those of us who are meeting and talking to the interviewing are also mm -hmm. sort of came to that same conclusion. So that we're not waiting until the year is up before we do something. So Absolutely not. Six months, you'll have a good idea if they're going to. Yeah, I think you'll have a good idea in three months. Three months. Yeah. I really do. Okay. So I'll um, move to accept the recommendation of the um, work group. Second, but any further discussion? One question, just on the contract. Good job. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't really want to ask this question. But no, just on the contract, if we do want to add some kind of performance guarantee or whatnot to that contract, when do we want to have that by? Do you want to have us review that? How would that? Yeah, you know? so I would, I would seek to get a uh, draft of that in front of you by next meeting. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just for a second, we have a gentleman here from Hillside Pizza. Patiently waiting. I know you're later on the agenda, but we'll walk. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, my name is Jack. I spoke a couple weeks ago about our beer and wine license that we were applying for, um, and we were looking to make sure that our uh, our seasonal patio area would be included within that beer and wine license. Um, so we worked with our landlords and also uh, the building inspector, Tim, to uh, have a fenced-in and gated uh, area that was designated for uh, you know, our outdoor seating. And uh, we've, we've done that. Tim came over the other day and gave us approval on our space. Um, we have additional plans to have our servers tip certified uh, once the, the license goes through, and also to have you know signs up for you know, this is designated for beverages only here, nothing can go outside of that. Um, yeah, so we're looking to have that. Just and still the time that. frame that you'll be open is just till 8 o'clock at night? Yes, yep. Okay. Yeah, we close at 8 o'clock. Uh, there's going to be no you know, outdoor speakers or music or anything like that. So I don't think it'll be a you know, crowd or anything so, like that. So the board has heard this uh, application uh, already and we're just amending it to allow uh, the use of the patio. The patio is fed stuff that's been inspected by Tim. There are no objections. Do you have a little diagram right there? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. A couple quick pictures of it. And a diagram of the space as well. Just off the corner of the building there. And we work with our uh, our landlords as well to make sure that they, you know, they have the final say on how it would look and how it would fit aesthetically with the property. And yeah, we. Plan. I mean, it's seasonal. We don't have any outdoor heaters or anything like that. I imagine it'd be, you know, by early October, it would probably be. Well, sure. yeah. um, I'll make a motion to approve. No, are they through, like, the permit? They're done with the permit. Um, that's all. just adding an amendment to the Exist existing one. Yeah. Right, and then it would be submitted to the state, uh, I think, so three days. Yeah. Uh, time so, so the per the permit hasn't been sent off to the state yet. We're uh, assembling that before we've made that request to the amendment. Right. So we talked to the 
state, they said just re rehold the area and uh, take your vote and submit everything in one package. Mm -hmm. So there's a motion to approve the request. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. I think this gentleman looks like Verizon. I do? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it doesn't look like a letter. <laughs> uh, I'm here for a poll hearing. I don't have a certain time, but you're here. Would you like to uh, get with it? Sure. Would you like the formal version or the... Cliff Notes version. Um, I'll give you a little of both if you like. Uh, well, so Cliff Notes fine with me unless somebody wants a fuller. Um, um, just for the record, my name is Paul Davis. I work for UC Synergetic. We're an engineering contract company doing engineering work for Verizon. So I am here tonight representing Verizon on their behalf. Basically, the petition tonight, hopefully you have at least a copy in front of you. Uh, is in regards to a old T164 and a half E9M on the westerly side of South Maple Street at a point approximately 1,412 feet southerly from the center line of Russell Street. And basically the objective of this pole is to be the connecting pole to the main line for the proposed solar field that's supposed to go down in that area. And that's basically it. So it ties in with the main line to the solar f the solar field, and that's its purpose. So this is in addition to what may exist already. So this, is a, this is a brand new pole. And, correct. An add-on. Yes, a proposed pole. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, none of our um, just look like all of you guys approved it. A quick question: but it, when you bring power to the pole or whatnot, is that going to be excavated or above or overhead? Um, I don't represent Eversource, so I can't definitively answer that question. However, based on my experience and what I've seen, it can go either. It can go aerially or underground. So to answer your question, I'm not certain. Okay. I'm just, I'm just thinking about the project later on down the road and water main and, and all that. I don't think it's an issue. Yeah, that would be a question you have to bring. Is the pole going to be higher than any of the other poles, or is it the same height as all those it would. Poles? It would either be the same height or five feet higher. So they typically place on that street 40 footers. It would be a 40 foot or 40 foot. All, all the ones they put into that solar field are, are the five foot higher ones, and this is just a pole in between the two of them. Correct. Yeah. It's a, what they call a mid-span pole. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they're already all there from that solar. And they're that high. Yeah, yeah, they're already higher than a regular pole. Okay, yeah. 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 Typically yeah. nowadays they place 45 foot poles. That's a, that's they got disconnects on three or four of those poles through there, so. Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve. Please. Second. Any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You're done. Thank you. Thank you. Stop dressing like Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll dress down next time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she, 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 she. Annual appointments we can take in a lump sum unless anybody has uh, its boards and committees. Yeah, it's only the cultural council at this point. Cultural council. Make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor. Any other questions? All those in favor? Is this for the upcoming year or just for the Correct. This be for the coming year. July 1st to June 30th. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm just abstaining because my daughter's on there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. right there. Oh, yeah. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> We're not doing transfers tonight, correct? We just did one. Do we have any others? No. Unless there's some transfer. Good. Okay. Hillside. Uh, we're going, not doing anything with Hampshire House on age, uh, aging. <laughs> governments tonight. I feel aged tonight. Governments. Um, ambulance contract. Um, we have a contract that is in a draft form that was sent to uh, Jill Bard for review, um, and it's okay to go. 
so we are going to be having also a committee meeting on ambulance, I assume, maybe next week. We haven't scheduled anything yet. We haven't scheduled anything yet, no. Did, yeah, Barbara Connor didn't answer the last, I don't know if she was out of town or, I mean, she's the chair. Is she scheduling it or do you want to or she want one of us to? I had put it out there to see when, but I, yeah. I can send it out again to see when. <laughs> And then maybe sure. you can make sure, just in case Barb's not available between the three of us, we'll make sure it gets scheduled. Yeah, I have Monday and Wednesday next week. I did email you the updated uh, with the corrections from from council, from council and also uh, Mr. Phil had made some recommendations. Those were discussed with action. Those are added in there. Um, so they're okay with the rebates? Like the rebates, they're completely fine with. Uh, you're not going to see the language they're getting me that if but they're, the part on that it has has this waste. They are they, that is standard practice that they put that box and it's under their OSHA standard, which is and there might be out of an independent line for that. Could, if we could aim for Monday, that'd be great. So Monday's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I was just checking mine too. You can't do Tuesday. Tuesday, I have a class I teach. You're teaching people. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, Chief, you'll have to post by tomorrow. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> there was only one correction from Action. They were happy with everything on the contract except for one financial statement. So, you'll see that it was as well. And it was basically one word in that line that they requested it be a review rather than a full draft. They didn't want all of our, all their financial statements coming to us for all of their contracts, just specifically Hadley, they're fine. So we just amend, we amended that one. They don't want us to know how much money they're making. <laughs> <laughs> and David, I don't know, did you, did you send out to them? Uh, they've also received their full, uh, they are no longer provisional. They have received their full ALS status. That's all been, Yes. Yes. So that's in my big town administrator's report. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, since we're doing ambulance, this is not at yeah. the time to do that. No, you have to tell them they have all of their uh, things needed ducks to, yeah, ducks the, um, to go. I, I did have one more question. If, if and when, hopefully when, the uh, fire station passes, what, what sort of time frame are we looking at? For building it out, yeah. I believe the last the last one we don't quote me on this. I'm pretty sure it was like 18 months for because we're going to have to go back and do some design. The building is going to stay the way it was designed, but it's going to have to be repositioned on the lot, so they would have to do that. Okay, so do we need a motion or anything tonight, or we're we waiting until June 20th? Yeah, June 20th when you have the clean documents in front of you. We've had a chance to look at all of this. this is been a blizzard of emails back and forth, uh, so give you guys a chance to, to look it up and see. And then the committee will meet just to review it um, and report back on the 20th, and we'll be good to go. Mm -hmm. And in the spirit of hitting the ground running, maybe on the 20th, assuming that we approve the contract, we could also talk about oversight. Yeah. What, do you want to talk a little bit about their outreach that they're doing and uh, put that out there so people know about the upcoming meetings at the senior center and whatnot so that way uh, they can attend if they haven't seen the sign. Do you want me to okay. it? So um, they were at the senior at the senior center last week um, and um, up front and clear said they are not currently under contract but they didn't see that they actually really gave high praise to the ambulance committee they said you really put them through the ringer and had really good questions. So, so sweet so talkers. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's my class. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I sat through it. They were really informative. I also asked a lot of questions, um, <clears throat> and they will be back again on June 11th at 1 p.m. Um, public's totally invited to come hear all about Action EMS um, as their potentially new ambulance provider and what they're going to be bringing, um, their certifications, what they're hoping to do working with 
um, the emergency personnel um, and exclusively having one ambulance in house at all times. So they're just discussing their experience and what they're providing and then just answering questions is what they're basically doing for them. They're, they're telling everybody what, you know, I asked, are they ALS? I needed to know that. I had been in a situation before right. where I was waiting with a, an officer doing CPR. Then the regular ambulance came, they weren't ALS, and those four minutes we waited for the ALS ambulance to come felt like two hours. Um, so just, I really kind of asked all those kinds of questions. Um, people asked a lot of questions. Um, they were very informative and um, it sounded good that they were really, um, they had a model in place in other places to do what they wanted, what you want them to do um, insofar as training and things like that. So we asked all of those things. They did make it clear there isn't a contract at that point. And um, one thing that, especially if you're meeting with big groups like that, and this is after probably the contract, but I, one of the features that I thought that they had was excellent was the fact that they had a database that they could, right. you know, put in that someone has heart issues or, or you know, has a defibrillator or whatever the issues are. Right. And it's similar to what Mike was saying before with the, with the code red. Not everybody knows to fill that in or go in there. So. Right. Right. They do want to do a lot of database. outreach to yeah. build that database so that when they're going somewhere, they know that medical history already and can walk that in there prepared. Great of course, it's it's dependent upon you know, community that. participation, mm -hmm. but um, interesting to know that that's possible. Mm -hmm. But I, I also want to just I'm going to do my nurse side for just a minute. Um, if I can, I want to commend Susan for jumping in there to start CPR uh, and to do that. I know it can be very difficult at times, but. Um, those minutes count the most and I want to say that no matter where you are do not wait for your EMTs your ALS it doesn't matter what degree you have of service whether you're paramedic or whatever basic the initial CPR, thing, yeah. basic CPR yeah. is to jump in there and get the circulation going circulation circulation that's all they tell you skip the breaths you don't even have skip to do that so they, yep. they tell you that Chest now so just to do that and make people aware that it's really important to do that. Something so. is better than nothing. Correct. Don't worry about doing it thank right, you. just do it. That's right, so thank you. Okay, uh, just a couple questions. Do, do they need a contract to start setting up the mutual aid agreements or can they start that before they have a contract? We're actually working on that. Next week we're meeting with um, multiple departments to start that and we are also, Evan and I are working on the service zone plan uh, it was recommended that we really be active members, active role in that service zone plan. Uh, so we're probably going to handle the majority of that just so that it's specific to Hadley. It was the same thing. Amherst put it together for us, but it was reviewed by myself and the select board and signed off by the select board. That's our town's document. They're our provider, yes, but um, that's an important document for us. And there's a lot of information in there we have to make sure it's correct. So, okay, so it's almost like the town of Hadley is making that agreement. <laughs> As much as them. As far as the mutual aid agreement, yeah, so that's aid, there's yeah. two separate things. Yes, they are meet, they're going to be meeting with pretty much everybody surrounding us next week. We have Tuesday is going to be a very busy day with with uh, meetings and everybody. Um, we sent out today to Amherst for uh, for Tuesday. That'll be a, a big big meeting. Uh, South Hadley District One and Two are on schedule for in the morning on Tuesday, and I believe he has a meeting with Northampton that afternoon and also. What was the last one? The Scam South County, Scam South, South County South EMS County. as well. Okay. Sounds good. And uh, how soon after the contract will there be like staff selection? And do we have any idea of like the date, the transition date, or can we say that now? We don't select the staff. But there is a committee to review who's going to be staffing that ambulance. Yes. In Under the contract, there is we were we will be provided with the list of all the folks that are going to be working in Hadley for us to review their 
the qualifications and everything having to do with them. Um, and that's an ongoing thing. So if there's any issues in, in town, it's under the contract that if we have an EMT that we feel is not performing to the, the standard that we need in Hadley, we, we will let them make them aware of that and uh, they'll be providing us with an alternative. So that's why I was uh, hoping next um, on the 20th when we have that final contract, we can just lay all of that groundwork. So once July 1 hits, we know who's like on those committees and all that stuff. So is that July 1 is when the contract will that's, start? That's when start yeah. Yeah. That would be when they're starting service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 We're hoping for a transition, a seamless transition from June 30th to July 1st. That's, mm -hmm. that's what we're working on right now. Yeah. On uh, the 20th, can we invite someone from a representative from Action to show up in case we have any issues or last minute questions that we can address it that night so that we can get this done? Yeah. Yeah, because they'll be under the gun to right. get working here. That you know, they'll have less than two weeks to. Right. They're in good company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a crunch. Mike, do you want to reach out to them, or do you want David to? I've been emailing Michael about 14 times a day, so I'd be so happy to. Okay. It's up to you. I, right. I can email. Throw him one more. Okay. I'll text him right now. Thank you. What time would you like him here? Seven. Fifteen. Yeah, yeah seven. Fifteen. will be good. We'll do ambulance first. Then. Okay. That's so Tuesday we have the meeting with Amherst. Yes. Oh. Same meeting. No mm -hmm. different. Different. Select meeting on the 20th. Oh. Okay. 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 I'd be happy with the one. And just one more question. I'm sorry. That committee, um, like that, you want to set up for the ambulance? Do you want to have people? Die? I don't know if we have to approve that committee or how that is, but maybe have that committee ready to go on. I have, I have requested that. It's supposed to be the fire chief, the select board member, yeah. and I believe a member of the public. Right. Okay. Um, so that's your decision. Uh, the fire chief is pretty much set in stone, or my, I would have Evan yeah. act on my behalf. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the other ones, that's up to you. But I think it's important that we have that in place as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, maybe somebody who's actually on the committee now might be a good fit because they've gone through the whole ambulance process if they're willing to be a part of that. But well, we can talk totally about up to you. the 20th and have it. Is that right? Because I thought I was thinking about the public member was the occasion we want to have time. Yeah. And get some letters of interest or something. Yeah. We've got a little short time to get the letter of interest in. Yeah, so do we want to say we're looking for people for that committee? We also have somebody from off of our committee that is public right now. that may want to serve maybe, also on the. Maybe if you ask Carrie. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, or, or Barb, too. Or Barb. Barb O'Connor. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I think one of them. Good. If they have the time. If they have the time. Okay. Well, good. Uh, here we are again. North Hadley Village Hall. Love that place. God. <laughs> Why don't you buy it? <laughs> <laughs> well, for a dollar. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were moving in there. Yeah. yeah. If I could buy it for a dollar, you know what I would do quickly? <laughs> oh no. Not again. I would be putting our fire department to the test. Oh. <laughs> the same as saying that, Joyce. Oh, you buy a building. Gracious. You remember back. Uh, Use it for a bit. Yeah. I'm sorry, David. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> David, please go ahead. On this North go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, David. It's yours. Take uh, it. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, last time we talked about this, uh, one of the members of the board suggested that we look into a real estate broker in order to market the building and get a better price for it. I uh, checked with the powers that be in Boston, and we have to procure the services of a broker. Um, so I put together this draft RFP for a commercial real estate broker in order to assist the town with selling North Hadley Village Hall. So it's pretty straightforward. It's an evaluation. It's not the bottom of the price, but the best qualified person who can offer the most advantageous price and qualifications has to do with depth of the experience, strength of, the, of their management team, uh, work that they've done in similar projects uh, and an interview to see who would uh, uh, be able to best represent the town on the commercial uh, real estate market. 
I have a question. Sure. So the proposal deposit, it says a proposal deposit of $2,500 is required as part of the proposal submission. And well, I'm assuming. I thought I edited that out, but shouldn't be there. Oh, so not requiring in this instance we should remove, you're removing the whole proposal deposit. Yeah. That, that makes more sense to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So. Because otherwise, like, who would do it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think this is great. Did the historical commission reduce some of these restrictions that were on it that caused the issue the last time around? So that way, the whoever's putting in a proposal isn't going to look at the restrictions and say, ah, I'm not messing with this thing. Yeah. So I haven't shown this to the historic commission. We we went through a process last time where we did, quite frankly, overload the boat with too many restrictions. Boy, and did you? <laughs> And then it didn't seem like the town was actually interested in selling the property. But after we received proposals, further restrictions just kept on popping up. So, mm -hmm. right. And we were, the building committee and historical and all of those are supposed to get together from yeah. one of our last meetings to make sure the RFP was worded correctly and finalized. Mm -hmm. And is that, has that been done? No, that has not been done. This is the first chance that, that you've done. had a chance to take a look yeah. at it. So I wanted to give you the first whack at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was a, a great suggestion David made to hire a broker. Mm -hmm. um, I like the idea of doing this, but it seems like we do need to, and, and the good news is the historical commission is, is starting to re, yeah. restaff again, so. We, do we want them to take another pass at it? On the, RF, the other RFP? Not this, but just the regular, the North Hadley. Yeah, Hall. I mean, I, I think we, we can this go ahead and run with this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But I'm sorry, yes, and that was yeah. being meant to leave yes. okay. reviewing the restrictions. Yeah, but I mean, they, they're going to run into each other here at some point, so we need to get that RFP straightened out with the building committee, with the historical, yeah. with us, and wherever else is involved. Why don't we just write? Another RFP on our side. There wasn't much yeah. that, Submit. Well, there wasn't much with the building committee that they wanted to change, but the historical, I believe, there was some that we were going to take out of it. Oh, yeah. well, well, you wanted to take quite a bit out. Yeah, I mean, they I, were willing. Uh, when well, you can't sell a piece of property and have somebody go in and inspect it afterwards after you buy it. Well, I think we're talking about two different things, right. though. There's an RFP for a real estate agent, a real estate broker, either one. Um, and then we were talking about the previous RFP for someone to purchase the property yeah, individually right. directly from the yeah, yeah. Right. So we're, we, should, we don't even need to worry about that. We just need to worry about the actual restrictions that are being placed on the property, yeah. right? Right. So and have those reviewed again with the right. yeah. UI and see if some of them should be removed. Like halfway to yeah. the um, Right. You know there is one right down the road. Exactly. So. Right, so I think the only the only document that the historic commission still needs to produce for us is the, uh, the preservation restriction in its final form. So that we're going to have to get that from them before we can release this. Is there? I know they're their own body, but right, is there any way we could put a timeline on this to move sure. this forward? Yeah. How long would we? I, I was thinking parallel paths. So have have a can we? have a deadline on this RFP, have it with this RFP, submit the old hall RFP and say we're drafting it or revising it, but at least they have an idea what we're selling. And then in parallel to that, have the historic commission reviewing it. I just can have a deadline. All those restrictions are going to scare off a lot of qualified people that would okay. be able yeah. to get us some decent money for it in the property because uh, mm -hmm. looking at that as a buyer, you really can't crazy I don't want it it's, it's just too much it's worthless <laughs> but no yeah. yeah I was trying to speed it up a little bit yeah. well uh, yeah I mean we can maybe we can move forward and if we can put a deadline on the historical commission restrictions I'm sure Joyce wants it done soon so <laughs> yeah. they're, they're yeah. meeting um, the 26th one of the one of the challenges to this particular parcel is that it's so old that it doesn't have a deed. It does, you know, we, we clearly have town meeting votes that show that the deed happens took over the uh, the property. Uh, 
but uh, so that may be a little complication, but we'll work through that one. So we need a motion or anything to move forward? For this, for this uh, real estate program to put out the uh, RFP. But if we put this out, what are we attaching to it for the <laughs> North Hall? Yeah. Can we? They need something to look at before they start. That's why I say, can we just submit the old yeah. one with them and say, hey, we're trying to minimize all these restrictions. Do you have feedback yeah. or, you know, we're going to, they're obviously going to have feedback removed at all, but uh, historical commission might go to review it as well at that time. Can we move forward maybe getting um, a pool of possible brokers that would be interested in this at least so we can move in that direction in the meantime while they're reviewing the restrictions? Or I don't know how that would work and that way once the restrictions are done we can say email it out to those tenants and say here you go. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, Christian, yeah. possibly some of these brokers may have a, a better avenue for the RFP than we do with, with the restrictions, you know? So maybe it's worth taking a look at a couple, two or three of them, and see what they offer. But it us. wouldn't take us that long to read. No, no, no. The real estate agents or whatever may right. have some better options for us to sell this property rather than the, the way we're going right now with our with our RFP. Well, we won't, we won't need an RFP anymore because we're just doing the RFP for the broker. We're not doing an RFP for the sale. Well, anymore. for right. for the restriction. Right. They may have a, a better alternative for the restrictions. I think what we, we need to take a look at it yeah. as a committee and see which ones we want to remove. Yeah, I agree. Look at it in our, okay. our memo to give us the RFP for the property. All right, so it sounds, sounds, sounds like the plan is, is that we have a little bit more state work to do on this. Uh, working with the uh, with the historic commission in particular, trying to get the historic preservation restriction document finalized. They may have to work with the Commonwealth. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that they've already done a lot of that work. Yeah. Uh, and Junior was in. I thought they were talking about a lot of that stuff. Yeah. A few meetings back. We'll circulate this with the municipal building committee so for their input, um, but. Pretty straightforward RFP here. Um, bring it back for implementation in, say, the middle of July or something like that. Yeah, sounds good. I, my only problem is like, if we delay sending this out, we don't vote tonight to send this out. It's going to be weeks, months. It's, you know, this is going to turn into a lot of time, and we're going to be delaying this project again, where, you know. We still got 18 months before we vacate that building, too. So you take that into I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah that's so fine, but I just would rather take action rather well, than Well, is there any reason why we can't just move forward with this tonight? Yeah. It's just a matter of logistics. Yeah, yeah. Gets I think the RFP just needs a little more a little tweaking, but I think we can make a motion to move forward with issuing an RFP for the sale of the sale. Okay. Second. I'll second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were seconding and I didn't want to second over it. <laughs> All those in favor? review from Berkshire Design and they're coming back basically with a clean slate that we have met all the requirements of the zoning bylaws. That letter will be received on the 12th. By the planning board. They have to have it a week before their meeting. Okay. And I mean it wasn't clean. There were some tweaks to be done and the architect for both buildings are making those changes. But nothing insurmountable? Nothing insurmountable. So just to recap for people that the plan board meeting will be held at Hopkins Academy. Yes. In the cafetorium. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Um, and then the library? Oh, I was oh, going to say we have an issue we were going to discuss in executive session. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to recommend that Suzanne and Jane sit in with us on that executive session meeting. Um, I don't know how much we want to get into, but uh, I just think they would be good to represent. It doesn't have to do with litigation, but just with our strategy regarding moving forward with the planning board and the senior center committee. 
I think we needed to have a discussion amongst the selectmen tonight for that purpose. Um, but that's my own theory. I mean, you can, I'm just one person. I'm just wondering if it would be helpful to have them there at least for fact, um, fact sharing. And then we can always ask them to be excused um, once we start discussing. Well, does it really have to be an executive session? That's my question. Yeah. It does, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it's a really good idea. <laughs> I don't have a problem with it being public. Well, no, they're, they're asking to attend. Yeah, yeah. It would be executive session. No, I mean the whole. But what they want to share with us now, can't that be done in open session? No. No? No. I don't think so, because it has to do with the strategy, so. Yeah, you're being you're being sued by one by a party. You really don't want to talk about that in open session. Not but we're we can't, for, 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 we can't for, discuss that in front of them either. That's, That's what I'm saying. I yeah. think to the extent they're present for information sharing, um, that so, would be helpful because there may be questions of the select board members who aren't on. But I don't have that. Action. I have. I don't have that in the executive session. I have. Uh, litigation land court case and that has pertaining to the legion that's yeah that's here on the agenda in executive session but i didn't know Correct. other issues were there it's all in executive it's session. one big bundle of stuff so. so i'm just wondering if we could just have them there for that purpose um your problem i'm going to chair i mean no, uh, i mean well the issue is one separate issue that should be in Session. The that other issue, I don't have a problem with it in public. I, I mean, do really we want don't. to take a vote on whether to? You can take a vote on it, yeah, if you want. You want to open it up to the public or you want to leave it in an executive session. Yeah, no, I don't want to open it up to the public because, again, as David pointed out, this is all part they're, of. They're our two separate issues. No. I don't it looks so. like to me. Would you agree, David? Uh, there's information that uh, council shared with me that I would prefer that I speak frankly with the board about. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that I can do that in a situation where there's a lawsuit in an open session. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to move that to executive session. Or mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. I'm not. Joyce should say that. <laughs> I'm good though. Well, we have a couple of other things. We have other things. Other things to take care of first before executive session. So, let's see. Was there any other? David, did you have anything else in your administrative report? Start uh, at the beginning. I know. Well, we kind of went around the you're, circle. You're, you're going wild over there. I'm man. wild. You want to get out of here tonight. Huh? I'm wild. <laughs> no, well, because other people were sitting yeah. here, so we, we put David off on yeah. Even we had him not even do his report, so let's let's have him do what we missed. That and all the comments, I think, are there. Yeah. And I don't think anybody is here for public comments. Unless you've had one. I don't. No. Okay. <laughs> All right, David, go for it. All right, go in very quickly. Stop me if I'm going too fast. Oh, so, thank you. MS4, it's on. The, the, the EPA said that they're not going to withhold implementation. So we are now entering into the first year of a five year contract with a five year permit that will take 10 years to unfold. We have the money in place. Uh, we have Marla has been doing a lot of good work in the interim period in order to position the town strategically to take advantage of the best management practices that are going to be required by the, uh, the new permit. So there's a notice of intent that it's due on October 1st, 1st and we have a draft notice of intent ready to go. Um, just moving through here. Bay Road Bridge replacement, uh, you had a stakeholders meeting for there's going to be a replacement in 2020, so we need to be thinking about traffic flow. Northampton Rotary in 2019, Bay Road Bridge replacement, 2020, Route 9 widening in 2021. 
there's going to be a lot of new dirt and a lot of traffic and a lot of things to coordinate. We'll be very busy people for that. And we'll get blamed for that, too. And then North, then rightly so. Yeah. Northampton Road <laughs> is at the end of the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They've so talked about multiple roads. <laughs> yeah. Can I make a quick comment on the meeting we had? Sure. Um, so originally they were saying that they were going to take the whole bridge out and be a detour. There was talk of that. Uh, when we met there last Thursday, they changed their mind. That it's going to be a two-piece bridge. They're going to have one-lane traffic the whole time while they're replacing the bridge, one side than the other. Uh, they found it easier moving the water main to the downstream side. Um, Are so you on Bay Road? Bay Road, yes, okay. excuse me. I thought um, you were talking about the coolest bridge. Yeah. <laughs> no, I am. Yeah. Don't mind. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> long, long story short, um, yeah. Um, the changes they, they wanted to meet with me about and, and whatnot are going to be an advantage to the town. It sounds like it's going to probably be a little less money with our 12 inch. We're going to pay the difference, but they're going to have to go further up the road to look into our 12 inch. So, 25% um, uh, plans were sent to me a little bit back. The responses were due. They said, throw them away. We're coming to meet with you. Uh, they called me uh, about a half hour before quitting time the day before and said they'd be here. So. Just wanted to give a quick update on that. The, as of right now, the bridge is not coming out as a whole. Um, it's going to be one lane traffic like when it was closed to one lane. Before. Are they going to try to fast lane this too? After uh, the tra traffic studies and all the other input that they've gotten from police, fire, yeah. us, you? Yeah. Um, as far as I know, they're, I mean, they're moving right along with it now. They want to, they want to get on it. Um, uh, Banesh Corp. I guess, guess is the, the um, contract contracting uh, consultant firm or whatnot. But I had a long discussion with him, and they're they're wanting to get on this on time, and they want to get it done. Um, that's why they're having multiple walks out here, multiple discussions with myself and, and whatever. So um, they'll be speaking with conservation again real soon too. During construction, will it have a good load rating on that bridge? Because I know a lot of farmers that have farms on the south side and come north and just it can be an issue if they've got to go I've, I've been asked that question many times but the the repair they just did was to put the original low ratings back on that yeah so it's still going to be one lane one way traffic you're going to be fine there's going to be no load restriction on okay. restrictions on it at this point they did not uh, say there, there would be anything to do with and free thing. for ambulances yes yes yeah, there will be no vehicles, yeah. <coughs> It'll, it'll be like when they did one side, the one-sided repair they did this past time, and then they raised the, the, the weight limit for any kind of vehicle to go over. That's the way it's supposed to be, this whole project is how I understand it. And the rating of the new bridge is going to be more than, obviously, the rating of the old bridge? Yes, and it's, uh, it's going to be about uh, 8 to 10 feet wider. Okay. Um, one sidewalk, that's going to provide for future bike lanes or, or something to that effect. But, um, I, I wanted them to move the water main to the other side because it's going to prevent um, um, having to having them to deal with uh, a temporary water system. So they can build the whole new 12-inch dry, John. Yeah. If they get it all dry, they, they charge it, they do their testing, so they hook up the water. It's only a day or two to tie it in on one side and tie it in on right. the other side. Rather than fire hoses yeah. feeding both sides of the bridge and, and then the customers. So. Yeah. That's the plan now. Mm -hmm. Because then you're looking at more water breaks down South Maple Street if you're going to reroute that water around from the water tanks. Yeah. All right, so moving right along the Route 9 South Maple Street sewer on the line, emergency repairs substantially complete. Moody Bridge Road flat grant. Uh, we're meeting on Friday morning with uh, the accountant to get the grant uh, uh, terms worked out. Designed for this fire substation, we're raising additional 855400 That's a vote. That's on Thursday, June 21st, over Hopkins Academy from noon to 8 p.m. Almost nobody knows about this. Um, so we we're going to size it everywhere. Yeah. So the Police chief, Facebook, fire Facebook, emails. Yeah, Chief and I are going to work on Friday to kind of do a mass mailing. Do, do we have a add on you can create channel some five? Facebook to ship it to me. Okay, page on we can, right? Yes, yes. we can. It's, it's, thank you. 
And how about those signs out front that the, that the DPW was putting up? Uh, oh, sign boards. Well, sign boards, those seem pretty good. Yeah, just do it again. But we need to make sure that people understand what they're voting for yeah. because, you know, this is technical language. It's not spelled out in the way that I would write it out if I wanted to communicate clearly with people. So doing a mass mailing is going to be very helpful in getting people to understand what it is that they're talking, we're talking about and what kind of impacts on tax rates, et cetera. Also, um, I know that Kenzie also sends out stuff on the town, you know, and she does her weekly emails to everyone, mm -hmm. but she sends out town stuff all the time. David, uh, what's this? Well, or maybe you can answer this. What's the story with the cross crosswalk, the uh, signals over there? Yeah, I thought that was supposed to be up. Or, you know, they're, they're waiting for the parts at this point. Yeah, the, the electrician came in for a few days to do a little bit of their work. Um, I tried contacting the, um, the, uh, the engineer that was assigned to the project. I think he's out on vacation, so uh, I'm assuming there was probably a blip in the parts coming in via tractor trailer or something, but um, that's a guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving right along, the, uh, the SCADA system, the mission system for the seven pump stations, the mission system is fully operational. We still have some electrical work to do at the wastewater treatment plant itself, but that seems to look like that's scheduled for completion by June 11th. Um, talk about that. The Turka Park. So Turka Park, uh, <coughs> received the contracts back from the last uh, master landscaping, but they didn't have the payment bond as required. And so we've got a call into them just saying, you know, Got a piece of paperwork that we need. Um, so, what piece of paperwork? Well, the legally required piece of paperwork, not a legal contract without it. Connecticut River uh, subsurface, uh, the levy uh, subsurface uh, survey, we received a final report on that. This project is substantially complete. We, you and I, have a meeting with the engineer, and then we'll have them come in and do a presentation to you. We can plug that in for the capital plan. Special town meeting update, you just took the action that I, that I asked you to. Uh, ambulance, we talked about that. OSHA, so we started talking about uh, one federal unfunded land uh, mandate. This is a new one. Um, formerly, we were exempt from OSHA regulations, uh, but uh, they made a change to the workplace safety law. Mass General Law Chapter 149, Section 6.5, amended to require safety regulations of OSHA to apply to municipalities on February 1st, 2019. So there's a lot of training opportunities that are coming up for that. We're not quite clear on what this may mean, but it'll probably affect capital, particularly for fire, uh, and probably affect some operational uh, requirements of many departments, particularly having to do with reporting standards that, uh, that are not going to apply. NFPA usually covers most of OSHA. Not this one. Not this one. Not this one. Will Maya cover any of that training? Yeah, so we met with the, uh, Maya to uh, find out if there's any training and they've got Googles that are coming up. There's going to be a lot of a lot of training opportunities by the state, by our insurance company. There'll be consultants coming out of the woodwork looking to help us out. Everybody's in the same boat. We're going to have to scramble to comply to this new regulation. And of course, they're not funding it, correct? Unfunded well, mandate. Oh. State way. Yeah. All right. Any announcements? We, oh, we the governor's number things. is. <laughs> <laughs> so we skipped over the library building update? So the library's oh, here. I am. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Go for it. So the library update is um, the committee approved the schematic design on Monday with a recommendation that will go to the um, library trustees next, but uh, unanimously approved that so that it will now move into the building and design phase. So it you know, gets into the nitty gritty from this point on. Um, yep. And then just one other thing is I wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, no, at least one other select board member, but um, there were several concerns expressed by the public um, about the traffic flow for the flea market this past weekend. Again, 
confluence of fabulous weather um, with you know, just a high traffic period. So um, we acknowledge that and the police department um, is actively working on um, working on figuring out you know what possibly could have gone any better. Um, there's some more to come on that front. Yeah, I thought I actually did take a ride up there too and some conversation with my officers and with my, the owner of the property. So they are all working on that, and uh, we'll have further update. And we'll hopefully see what the weather brings this weekend. Yeah, there's a couple. I mean, yeah, there's, there should be an email waiting for you. It's there. Yeah. 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 Any other um, announcements tonight? There was uh, a draft of um, meeting dates for October, November. Are we able to do that tonight? Approve that. Yeah, so I think I think we have meeting dates scheduled through to September. Do you need to have such a busy schedule? So I have tentatively September fifth. September, uh, yeah, Labor Day week? That's Labor Day week, so. Cancel that one. <laughs> 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 See, aren't you glad we're looking at it? <laughs> <laughs> so Labor Day was actually on the 3rd, mm -hmm. so the picture's scheduled for the 5th. But that's your point. Well, that's okay. Yeah, okay. We can do it with this. The 19th of September. Mm -hmm. We already did this. September. Yes. We did do October. Yeah. October 3rd. Make sure that I'm not skipping something. The 11th is the public forum. The yeah. town meeting is the 18th. So October, October 3rd, we need to meet because October 4th is the last day of most of the uh, warrant. The 11th. And we have the 17th and 18th. So, 3rd, 11th, 17th, 18th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, walk in before town meeting, and then town meeting on the 18th at 7 p.m. So, the 17th was one as well, sir. 17th is a slot. Okay. Yeah. Possible meeting on September 26th if we can get all of our ducks in a row. On the 26th? Yeah, September 26th. That's For what? Signing the warrant. But it doesn't have to happen that night. Can't we do it on the 19th? Uh, yeah. Anything could be pushing later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't do it. So we can do it there. Yeah. Yeah, why can't we do it there? You can do it there. Okay. The third, the third. So to leave the 26th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to finish the year? <laughs> it's every Wednesday. It's kind of From then till the end of the year. That's all I do. I just want to have it. I got these pages going all the way. Seriously, they're going to get a hotel. August of 2019, <laughs> so sure. Huh? Should we have a Halloween meeting? Yeah. Join us if you come on Don't give us a <laughs> You make yeah, November, month, but November 7th oh, and uh, November 14th, oh, so you're not doing it on Thanksgiving Eve. <laughs> you're paying for the room. <laughs> and then uh, I've got December 5th and December 19th. So basically the first and the third months otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So, good Thank you. All right. We have Stanley's retirement party on Sunday from 2 to 7. Dinner at 4. Correct. And can dance, dance. Polish music. Polish, Polish music. music. Yep. I, shoot, I hope I shoot by just for Stanley. 
if you haven't purchased your tickets yet, you may at the public safety complex or from. You can you can get in touch with us at the safety complex. Okay. We're getting close to the deadline, so. Okay. Yesterday, but we'll, we'll, we'll still take people. Okay, so some people can still sign up. With they can still get in touch with us. We'll figure it out. Okay. And, and you're, if you're holding tickets for us, we just pay you at the door. Mm -hmm. Any other announcements? Yes. yes. We have a community shredding event happening June fifteenth. It's a Friday. Um, it's for anybody and everybody. I don't know that there are any limits. It's happening from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the back parking lot of the Council on Aging. Um, Police Association is going to be um, cooking up hot dogs and hamburgers. It's free. You can also get rid of your hard drives um, and you can watch it get shred right there. So start going through your stuff, get rid of it. Identity theft, don't leave those things lying around. So any, any hard drives, yep. DVDs, any media, basically? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank it'll you. shred pretty much anything. You throw a car in there and it'll... It's going to go. Somebody's going to drop their car off now. <laughs> There's a pair of fire vehicles All right. Back over. And I have um, <laughs> four announcements since we've had a couple of weeks off. I have uh, condolences this evening for four people. Um, we have Leonard Horton. Uh, he was a graduate of Hopkins Academy. Uh, he actually, at one point, we owned a Horton house on West Street, so they go back a long history of having lived here in Hadley, so our condolences to his family. Um, Mr. Craig Harbison, I didn't know him, but um, he was a resident of Hadley. Our condolences to his family. Robert Kitsa was a graduate of Hopkins and had lived here in town. His brothers are Richard Kitsa and James Kitsa. And um, our condolences to them for his passing. Elsie Andrews, um, she was a West. Uh, she graduated from Hopkins also. Active with the Council on Aging. She worked for many years and retired from Bay State NICU as a uh, registered nurse. Our condolences to her family also. Anything else? Motion to go into executive session. So we're going to do all three of those? Can we make one motion for all three? Yes. Jeff, are you going to say something? No. Oh, okay. Second. Do you need to make a motion? Yes. Make a motion. Uh, make a motion that we go into executive session. Is may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares and we are also going to go into executive session um, for the same reasoning um, to discuss contract negotiations with non-union personnel the chief of police as well as the police lieutenants not to convene or reconvene in open session as the chair, uh, it is a, a detriment to do these cases in open session. Uh, I don't have the you declare. I, I still do declare. You do declare. I do declare to go into executive session. <laughs> it is a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Roll, Aye. roll call vote. Roll Skevitz. Yes. Phil. Yes. Um, Stanley. Yes. Jaden. Yes. Shango. Yes. All right, we're in the executive session.